she essentially is equating her the fact that she was kicked out from Girl Guide to when the children of Israel were kicked out of Israel. Hello, welcome, thank you for clicking on this video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Anne. If you're not new, welcome back my friends. Today we have a rather boring background, but it's fine because the content of this video is going to be incredibly engaging. Today we have an August books, all the things I read in August, my thoughts on them, grab a coffee, grab a tea, we're gonna chat, and let's jump into the video. The first book that I read in August was called Cassandra in Reverse by Holly Small, or Smale, I'm not sure how to say that. So this book gets four stars, in my opinion. Quick synopsis of the story, we have a character, her name is Cassandra, and she's definitely got some neurodivergency situation going on. So she is very rigid in her routines. She likes things very particular, very structured. She really isn't one to like fly by the seat of her pants. The plot line of the book is that she wakes up one day, her boyfriend dumps her, she loses her job, and like her favorite cafe is out of these banana muffins that she gets every single day. And so obviously she's like panic mode, um, but she somehow develops this like superpower to turn back time. So she essentially begins turning back time to try and redo these different events in her life and hopefully control the outcome that will lead to, you know, no breakup, no job loss, etc. Um, so it is a story of self-discovery because she kind of realizes like what actually is important to her as she's going back and reliving these events. She's kind of realizing like, do I even want this in my life? Pros for this book. I liked that our main character was neurodivergent. The story was fun. It was entertaining. It was unique. I hadn't really read anything similar to this storyline. And um, I think it was an engaging book. I also really liked all of, there's a lot of like Greek history references um, to different Greek gods and you know, different pieces in like Greek history. And the author uses that a lot in the story. She really incorporates that into the story. It was a very entertaining like anecdote to kind of have smushed into the story there. Overall, this book really reminded me of books like The Rosie Project, or Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I read that book last month, so if you want to hear my thoughts on that, I'll link that video below. In terms of cons, there were a few times where the like looping back and forth in time got a little bit repetitive. I think the beginning of the book was a little bit slow, but again, it was entertaining. I also think that the ending, kind of who ended up with who, and some of the ways that it played out in the end, was just like a little bit weird. The next book I read was Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. This book is a five star rating, which not a lot of books get, I have to say, but it was definitely worth it. Um, I think if you've read Lessons in Chemistry, you would probably um, rate this book as a similar vibe. I will say that Lessons in Chemistry is like the ultimate book I've ever read. I don't know that you can like surpass that, but this book was very similar. And I think um, if you're into that kind of book, you would like this. So essentially in this book, we have a main character. Her name is Tova. She is an older lady and she has been through some trauma um, in her life. She was married. Her husband passed away. She had a son and he disappeared and nobody really knows what happened to him. She lives in a small town. Everybody kind of knows what happened to her. She's the kind of lady who likes to stay busy. So she has a part-time job cleaning like at the local aquarium. There's also sort of a dual storyline going on. We follow a young, a young lad. His name is Cameron and he is sort of trying to find himself and he's trying to kind of learn what it means to be an adult and just sort of a self, he's on sort of a self-discovery journey. We also have the point of view of an octopus. Yes, you heard that right. Um, so the octopus, his name is Marcellus, and he offers narration here and there. Um, and so through him, this story sort of comes together. So in terms of prose, all the feels in this book, the way that Tova's grief is written about, she isn't one to like sit and um, mourn the things that have happened in her life. And I really admire that about her. She's a very strong character, but the way that her grief is written out is very like, very elegant. And I really liked that. At the same time, the fact that we have a narrator who is in fact an octopus, 
like you really can't get any better than that so that was a fun sort of like mix up to this book that every few pages you have Marcellus come in and give his POV. Loved that. I thought the storyline was fun. The storyline was unique. It was a little bit predictable, but it was almost like the author wanted you to understand what was coming and then show you how the characters themselves realized what was happening. I also liked this tight-knit community that Tova was a part of. Being an elderly lady, um, she had friends who cared about her and would check in with her and were concerned about her well-being and I think that was really nice to read and um, I think we could all use a community like that so that was just really refreshing. Not a lot of cons for this one. Cameron at times, it was a little hard to be patient with him. He was frustrating at certain times but Again, he was like on this journey of self-discovery and so like in the beginning you kind of are annoyed with him. Um, he's sort of selfish and he doesn't understand the impact that he has on the world. But obviously he learns, he's better at the end of the book, etc. Um, overall, this was such a good book. I loved it and I would highly recommend reading this book. The third book I read was The Bungalow Mystery. That is Nancy Drew's third book. I'm making my way through the series slowly but surely. And that is by Carolyn Keene. This book gets three stars. All of the Nancy Drew books have had three stars thus far. They're young adult, they're basic, but they are fun. This book starts with Nancy almost dying. Okay, she has a near-death experience. She almost drowns. She is rescued and she develops a bond with the woman who rescued her and she essentially is looped in to help this woman a little bit later on when she's dealing with some things with her guardians. So this book, it was a fun one. It was probably so far the funnest one that I've read. There was identity theft, there was kidnapping, there was obviously a near-death experience. Um, it was just fun. It was engaging. I listened to the audiobook. Laura Linney narrates. Stellar, wonderful, would recommend. Next, I read... As Chimney Sweepers Come to Dust by Alan Bradley. This is the seventh in the Flavia de Luce series. This book is an automatic five. Every Flavia de Luce book is an automatic five and I will fight anyone who disagrees with that. Um, I love this series. I love Flavia. It's so good. Flavia is sent to boarding school. She gets shipped off to Canada and she is sent to boarding school and uh, as, you know, in true Flavia de Luce form, she's there for like not even a night and she already discovers a body that's been stuck up a chimney. So like, okay, here we go. Pros for this book, it was really cool being able to see so many new characters because obviously all of the teachers are new, all of the, like her schoolmates are new, there's other characters, there's like a reporter in there and there's like some people um, here there that are also new, so we have like a ton of new characters and it was really cool to like meet them all. I think also having Flavia in a completely new environment has been really cool to read about as well. Up until now, Flavia's books have taken place at her home called Buckshaw in England in the village that she lives and obviously there are a ton of wonderful characters and different things that happen but this was nice to sort of have a little change of pace and meet some new people. Um, also, I like low-key loved how Flavia is like in boarding school. She's like at school and she like never goes to class. So like I think she's in like class like three times through the whole book. This book like you could predict where the ending was going to go. You could probably predict who, you know, who done it. Um, but honestly, this book was so entertaining and like it was just so captivating with all of the new characters and events that I didn't even care. And um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I liked it even better than the last one, which that one had been my favorite thus far. So just keeps getting better. I want to read you just like if you're interested in like if you're trying to understand like why I like these books so much, let me just read you like a small passage. This is very dry humor. Um, so if that's not your kind of humor, you probably won't like these books. But let me just read you a, li a, li a little a little bit. So basically, Flavia's talking about how she was kicked out of Girl Guides, which is like Girl Scouts, um, because, well, essentially because she's like, she's Flavia, she's a troublemaker, but, you know, obviously she will never admit that. So, I was not at my best with hordes, a fact that I had not entirely realized until the day I was sacked unfairly from the Girl Guides. 
My case had been debated from the vicarage kitchen all the way down to the solemnly paneled council chamber of the Girl Guide Imperial Headquarters in London. But it was no use. The die, as someone or another had said, was cast. I recalled with bitterness the moment that Miss Delaney ripped my badges from my sleeve as the troop was made to chant in unison, shame, 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 shame. I knew suddenly how the children of Israel must have felt when they were cast out by the Lord. So she essentially is equating her, the fact that she was kicked out from Girl Guides, to when the children of Israel were kicked out of Israel. Obviously, I think we can all see the parallels there. So anyway, this is how he writes, and Flavia is all the things, such a good main character. So, loved the book, would recommend. Next, I read The Safekeeper's Secret by Sharon Shin. This is the first in the Safekeeper series. This is also a young adult series. I've read a lot of young adult books this month. Let's not talk about it. Essentially, this book is, this is a book that I actually have read before. I read before when I was a wee lass, and I have this book in my bookshelf. I was looking for something easy to read that I could get through pretty quickly, and so I just picked this up, and I was like, I'll read it again. Um, so I have read this before, so I obviously liked it enough to, number one, keep for like 10 years, and number two, to read again. Um, so this is, a, it's like a mythical, fantastical fantasy series. It takes place in like the olden days, right? With like horse-drawn carriages and like fires at the hearth. Like there's a king, all the kinds of things. Like we're channeling like our Robin Hood vibes, right? There in this world, this fantasy world that the author has created, there are safe keepers, truth tellers, and then a dream maker. And so these are just like people that have these inherent abilities and they like service the, the community of like normal humans. And so the safekeeper, that is a person that just like keeps secrets. So like you can come and tell your secret to the safekeeper and they will like remove the burden of the secret from you and they just hold secrets forever. Then you have the truth teller, obviously the opposite of the safekeeper. The truth teller just goes around, around spouting truth. So you know when you're like at the family function and you're like look at my cute little boy, isn't he so cute? The truth teller's like, you know, dude that ain't your son. Kind of a vibe. Like they just... They don't know when to read the room. Um, and then you have the dream maker. And the dream maker is somebody who has had a lot of like misfortune in her life, but she basically unwittingly and unwillingly um, makes the dreams of the people around her come true. So people like want her to be in their presence because whenever she is around them, just like random things happen that are good for the people around her. So that's sort of like these characters and their vibe. Which already is like super cool because like imagine if you were in a world where, I don't know, there was like a dream maker or like you had a, a secret that was like really weighing heavy, heavily on you. It could just like, you could just go to the safekeeper and be like, let me tell you my hot goss. You know, that would be fun. Also, side note, 10 out of 10, I think I would be a truth teller because your girl could not keep her mouth shut. She can't keep a secret to save her life. I am what I am. Essentially what happens, a safekeeper turns up at the door of another safekeeper and presents her with a baby. And her sister is like upstairs giving birth to another baby. And so we essentially watch the children grow and we discover, like we watch sort of like their lives as they grow up, like their mom, um, and their aunt and then also there's a truth teller in their life his name is Thomas and the dream maker comes and stays with them his, her name is Isidore and we sort of watch them grow up and lean into their different personalities etc so on and so forth and we throughout the book are kind of guessing at their parentage like we're thinking that the baby who came to the doorstep was like the king's baby because the secret the safekeeper who brought the baby to the cottage was like the king's own safekeeper. So like the the tea is that that baby is basically the next in line for the throne. As the book progresses, like at the very end, we discover like who the actual parentage is. It's a short book. It's fun. It's entertaining. I think there's like three in the series. So I am going to continue through the series, read the rest of them. Um, I really like this book more for the fact that it's the world that she creates is just like hella cool. I would say that, I mean, it's a young adult novel. It's simplistic. The plot isn't like incredibly intricate, but like the world, the world building in this book is like 10 out of 10. So good. Love it. If you like world building and you're into fantasy, even though it's a young adult book, like I would give it a go. Okay. 
Well, that's all the books that I read. She's done rambling. I am currently collecting books to read for September. I would like September and October to be ultimate fall, spooky, cozy vibes. So I'm talking like witchy books. I'm talking like haunted house books. I'm talking like cozy mystery books. That sounds great. Um, so if you have any recos for me to read in September and October, please leave them in the comments below. And I think we're gonna have like a good old spooky September read and a good old spooky October read. So prepare yourself for that. I hope I'll be able to read a few more like chunkier books in September and October. I just stuck with a couple of young adult books this month because we've been busy with other things. And young adult books are easy to read, obviously. So that's why you're getting that this month. But next month, we're gonna have some chunkier books. It's gonna be great. I will see you in the next one. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye.